Greetings and salutations, language arts learners. Uh, my name is Ivan Filipov. I am the language arts instructor at the JC campus of Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. And this is another episode of Language Links. And what I try to do in as little amount of time as possible is to make a concept surrounding language arts simpler so that you can get it. Today we're gonna to talk about the structure of a five paragraph essay. But you may not recognize it at first. Anyone know what that is? Not yet? I'll keep going. Now you know what it is? Yeah, it's getting close to lunch here. Triple Decker Cheeseburger, right? What does that have to do with a five paragraph essay? Well, you know I like analogies. This is an analogy to explain to you a five paragraph essay. This lesson was taught to me by a great English teacher in Biloxi named Tess, and it makes a lot of sense. Okay, what is the structure of a five paragraph essay? Well, first you have your introduction. Then you have your three body paragraphs. Then your conclusion, okay? Now, the good thing about the triple cheeseburger analogy is that this triple cheeseburger has big, beefy patties, right? You gotta love cheeseburgers if you like this one. And this is to show you that your paragraphs, your body paragraphs, have to be big and beefy. Now, the top is the bread, the bottom is the bread, Notice the bun on the, on the bottom is a little bit smaller. You can apply that to your concluding paragraph, too. It's got all the same material. It's not bread, but the same material in your introductory paragraph as you have in your concluding paragraph, but this one's just a little smaller, a little understated, right? So, when you start your essay, in this first paragraph, you're going to have some general sentences, a hook for the audience, and then you're going to have your thesis, a little something special to catch the reader's attention and say, I'm going to be talking about A, B, and C. Don't say I'm going to be talking about it, but just give your table of contents. This is going to be A, this is B, this is C, and then in the end, you will restate your thesis a little bit differently. Don't just repeat yourself and then a couple of general sentences to leave your reader with uh, a little something to think about when they're done with your essay. Okay, so are we done with the burger? No. This is just the bare bones format, right? We got ingredients to add. So what you have to include in between your paragraphs is something to stick it together. I like cheese very much. This is cheese. In case you can't tell, I'm not an artist. But you need to have something to stick every paragraph together. So there's some more cheese, right? Maybe for your bottom paragraph, you wanna have, a white marker's not gonna work, so I'm gonna use black. Maybe you want a little mayonnaise, okay? Ketchup, sticking the top bun on, here's a little ketchup. These transitions depend on which type of essay you're writing. If you are writing something in chronological order, then these transitions that stick your essay together are going to be things like the next day or <coughs> After that, right, they can be as simple as then, next, 
right? Uh, if you are writing something in, say, an argumentative form, then you might use a transition like another reason. Your transitions can be as simple as, furthermore, and what these transitions do is they not only hold it together, but they provide a flow, you know, like a blending of the different flavors, okay? But we're still not done. What else do you like on your hamburgers? Pickles? Pickles. This one's waffle cut. Okay. So, some pickles. What are the pickles in your essay? Maybe that is just a little something to spice it up and give it some extra flavor. How about a personal example? So if you are writing a paper about the importance of family or um, your father or some topic like that, maybe you dip into your own information and pull a memory up and say, I can remember the time we visited the, mm, you can fill in the details, right? So those are your pickles. Personally, I like some hot sauce. This is hot sauce. I'm not an artist. So put some hot sauce in there. Spice it up a little bit with some vocabulary, right? Don't say this is good, this was good, it was a good day. Um, I had a good time with my friends. You know, dig a little deeper than that. You don't have to use $50 words, but every once in a while pull out a $20 word and it'll spice up your essay a little bit. Now, when you open your hamburger, you pull the wrapper off and you look at your hamburger, what are some of the things you might look for? I like to have maybe a little, what is that, like split top bun at the top? Uh, maybe some sesame seeds, right? It's starting to look good, isn't it? I'm getting hungry. Uh, so these are, in your first paragraph, the reader's first impression of your essay is going to involve your title and your hook. Right at the beginning, your title needs to reflect something about your essay. Please don't entitle it Example Essay or My Essay, right? Come up with a title that encompasses the material of your essay and it's unique that it, so that it wouldn't work on another essay, right? So come up with a good title. There's your sesame seeds. Maybe there's a little melted butter on the top and that's your hook. So you don't jump right into your topic. You maybe say, um, imagine life without the movies. And then you have your reader thinking before you even get started. And then you go into the importance of sound in the movies or uh, setting or special effects, right? But once you get their attention, then you can move into your topic. Don't just cannonball right in. Okay, some things that you need to avoid. All right, if you have a sensitive stomach, you probably need to press pause now and close your browser. Uh, there are things that are taboo in college essays. These are, I'll put these as your no-nos, okay? Do not use the word you. It's not a casual conversation, okay? It is best to avoid contractions. They're considered informal. Don't use slang, right? If you use the word cool, you're talking about something in between cold and hot, not something interesting or amazing. Um, this word should be avoided, okay? Uh, when I teach this, I, I generally pick a student and I say, hey, would you go get me that thing off my desk? And they say, yes, sir. And they run over to get that thing off my desk and then they get there and they have no idea what they're getting. That's because thing doesn't mean anything, right? Um, and then another word to be careful with is it. If you say, um, it always seems that so-and-so, uh, that it is kind of super superfluous, right? So be careful with that word as well. When you throw the word you 
in your essay, even if the rest of the burger is fantastic, it's kind of like if one of these sesame seeds sprouted legs and crawled off your hamburger, right? It's really, from that point on, it's kind of tainted. You're not really hungry anymore. So avoid these, avoid these things. Stay professional. You've heard the expression, think outside the box. Uh, with formal essays, you need to kind of think inside the box first and make sure you've got your formal essay and then you can explore with your spices and your pickles and etc. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. That's all for now.